This time on Custom Works, we're going to be making some custom parts for the A40 and for the non standard. Let's get to the workshop. Right, up to, up, up to my neck in wiring. So here's the wiring loom, or what is left of it, out of the A40. Um, we're just trying to pick out what plugs and stuff we need to plug into the bits of Ford Escort that are still left on the, um, on the column. And uh, basically just get it, just make some kind of sense out of it. And um, we've got another wiring loom over here, which is all labelled up, ready to, uh, ready to start sort of being fitted. But before we can do all of that, and before you can have a wiring loom, you need somewhere to put your switches. So what I'm gonna be doing right now is making a dashboard for the A40 so we can mount all those old, cool, old school toggle switches and stuff, and make it super, super cool. So this is gonna need some dye bond, some fiberglass, and I'm not sure what else, some dash of border it, oh yeah. So then, we have taken out pretty much everything from the dashboard. All the looms gone and everything. And there's no dashboard and the old dashboard was just rubbish. So we're going to make a nice aluminium one. Things we've got to think about though. Now I've got this piece of dye bond here. And I'll put it in there. I, know, I could probably just like glue that in place and we can put some switches in there. But it's not good enough. What we need, we need it to come out a bit so we can have the demisters in the top. And we've got to have it so it fits nicely into what is, it's an awkward shape to fit anything to. Um, but it's got to be in there, no rattles, no shakes, something really nice. So first off, I'm going to try and cut this a bit better to the shape. And then what we'll do is we'll make a fiberglass surround for it. But like we've done before, We'll masking tape up everything. So once the fiberglass is dry, we can bring this in and out. I don't want it to be a dashboard that is, you know, maybe on four, you know, four, six screws, something like that, that we can just take it out. You can work on things, put the dashboard back. If you ever want to fit a radio or any auxiliaries to the electronics, you can always get to it. So let's make a dashboard. <laughs> So what I've done, I've cut this, I cut this piece of um, dye bond and then uh, I masked all the way around it, all up into every sort of undulation of this odd shape it's got to fit into and then I've fiberglassed it in. Left this overnight, this is nice and strong now and what I can do, I can pop this out. And the reason I've done this, if I just made a dash and fitted it in, there's always going to be gaps around it. There's always going to be niggly little bits where you can't quite get in. Whereas what I've done here is I've done it right up to the edges so there'll never be those niggly bits. And now once it's out, um, I can make a raised border all the way around here for the aluminium insert to sit in. And also in that border running across the top of there, what I'll probably do is house a piece of uh, plastic pipe like a, I don't know, kitchen bathroom waste pipe in there with holes in so it will blow the air up the windscreen. Um, I have got some proper vents that could fit in here, but they're just too big to get between where I've got the room from the steering wheel to here. So whatever sticks out of here, I've really got to, I've really got to think about this. And if I put the proper vents in, the dash would end up uh, touching the steering wheel. So that's something we don't want. But even if I have to make a, a cutout in this border to make it work, then that's okay as well. I'll still have somewhere to put some vents to demist the windscreen. So then, let's get all this out. 
and let's see what we've got. And there we go, we've got a dashboard that perfectly fits into that gap. Right, so I've got this like flexible hose stuff and I'm gonna use this as an air channel for the demisters. Um, I can't go any more on the diameter than this because the steering wheel is so close to the windscreen. So this is what I'm gonna use. But first, so it's all a bit, you know what I mean? It's a bit unruly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put the heat gun on it for a minute and straighten it out a little bit. If the heat gun would work. Okay then, so I magically fixed the heat gun by actually plugging it in and now it works. It's, a, it's another medium tip. Okay, and so the heat's relaxed that a little bit and it's not quite as unruly anymore. I think we'll stand a chance of sticking this in the right place. Okay, so that's that cut to length and uh, fixed nicely on there. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and mitre fix this into position and then fiberglass over it. However, this is um, plastic and sometimes mitre fix don't work very good on plastic, but hey, it's only got to hold it while the fiberglass dries. So, I shall glue this on and then hopefully we'll glass over it. So there is our sort of basic backboard for a dashboard in there. Dashboard for the backboard. How many more times can I say board? That's looking pretty good. And I, you know, there's room there as long as I only come just like the thickness of the fiberglass and a bit of filler over that. I should be okay. And we should get this to blow up the windscreen. What I'm probably going to do is I'll glass this on and then I will have a bit more of a trim back on this edge just to reveal a bit more of that window rubber and make sure we're definitely gonna get air hitting that glass. But up to now, not looking too bad. I know for certain as well that once I actually glass over this, this is gonna make this a lot more rigid. So, let's get to the fiberglass. And I've just packed up just under the middle and there so that this this piece of fiberglass has got like a resting shape and that resting shape is <clears throat> it slightly bows back into the corner so it has got a very slight sort of arc to the whole thing so I've just pe packed it up so it's just in its resting state so that when it goes back in the car it will still be the same shape as when it came out of the car as always 
bit of contact adhesive just to stick, you take the fiberglass down, just so that when you're doing the resin, everything's neat and tidy, and you're not going to get any nasty surprises about like it won't sit or anything. Fiberglass is all on, I'll leave that to dry, come back to it later. Okay, so while that on the dashboard's drying, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a little heat shield for the top of the exhaust manifold on the non-standard, a uh, bit of dimple dye and stuff like that. It's all about small details and it's the kind of creative stuff I just love to do. I'm sorting out this uh, exhaust manifold off the Pinto that we're dropping into the standard enzyme, or the non-standard as I call it. And uh, I know that I can paint this in some like um, heat proof paint, uh, it's never going to look that nice as big cast on manifolds, so I'm going to make a heat shield for it, which it originally would have had bolting onto these two studs. So I've cut this piece of steel out, that looks like it just about fits. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to drill this and dimple dye it just to give it that extra bit of detail. So there's the holes drilled. Um, what I'm going to do now is just clean it up with the old uh, flat wheel, that nice one, and we'll drop the dimple dies in. Got the dimple die here, and all I'm going to do is squash this in the vise, and then uh, it should look pretty cool. dimple dies in the piece of steel and as you can see because we've dyed, dimple dyed it it's put this crease in it so I'm just going to put a slight curve on these edges and that should straighten it back up nice and straight now and uh, we've got a little bit of a curve on it it's just to make like it's got a proper edge probably a little bit of hammering I've still got to do there but then what I'll do I'll just grind this off make this smooth and then uh, it'll be ready for uh, paint Heat shield is done. Um, I'll paint this in some high temperature paint and I, what I'll probably do is do the manifold black then do this in, uh, in silver and that can sit on there. And just as you look in from the top of the engine, just makes it look a little bit better. And what was that? Like maximum of like probably less than an hour to make that. So, you know, high impact, very little time. And as I had this piece of steel knocking around, no financial outlay at all. Okay, so that's it for this week. Next time, we we'll, might even have some wiring in the A40. We'll be doing some more work on the dashboard. And if everything goes well, we will have completed the engine swap in the non-standard. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, click and subscribe, and click that bell icon for regular updates. I know I always say this, but it's what YouTube wants. Between now and then, have a great week. Thank you very much and good night.